morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church worship service right here in Auburn, Alabama. We thank you for joining with us this morning. You may be sitting here in the sanctuary, and we appreciate the fact that those of you that are here, we appreciate you being here. You also may be watching us on social media, either live or on a delayed basis. But whether you're watching us here in the sanctuary or whether you're watching us uh, on a delayed basis or live, we are welcoming you to the worship service of the Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church. I, I want to just ask you that for the next hour or so, uh, let's just ask God to help us to be sensitive to the presence of His Holy Spirit. Uh, we, God has brought us a long way during this year of 2021. Uh, we thought 2020 was a difficult year, but 2021 has had its challenges also. But God has brought us and for that, we are thankful. Uh, through January of this year, through this final Sunday of, the, of this year, we are still here. Praise God for that. Amen. I also want to uh, tell you before we get started that today is a, a special day. Uh, we will be recognizing, as we have for the last many years, uh, we will be recognizing the elderly among us. We always call, call the last Sunday of the month our super senior uh, day. That's the day that we recognize those that are 80 years old or above. We recognize them especially. Of course, we, we love them every every week. But we especially love and recognize them on the final Sunday of the month. And we'll be speaking about that a little bit more later. Uh, it is a joyful day to celebrate those who are in their, uh, their 80s and above. But it's also, this is a, a day that uh, gives us a little bit of a heavy heart. Uh, we have lost several of our uh, super seniors during this year, 2021, we've lost a number of them. And I should not say lost. I should say that many of them have passed on and gone to be with the Lord. If they know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, they're not lost. We know where they are. The Bible tells us that they're in the arms of Jesus. And for that, we are uh, satisfied. But they are still missed. Uh, we will be, as I said, we'll refer to them a little bit later uh, in our worship program today. But while we have a little bit of a heavy heart because of those who've gone on, we also have a joyful heart for those that God has allowed to still be here with us, to celebrate with us, and to worship with us. So we're thankful for that. We're going to ask our choir to open us up. And today, always uh, the fourth Sunday of the month of today, our men will be blessing us. It's always a special blessing to me to see men who are not, are not afraid, not ashamed, to sing the praises of God in a public forum. Amen. So we're going to ask our men to begin our worship service today, and we'll come back and share with you a little bit more. Set your hearts, set your minds, especially your spirits on things that are above as we worship together today.
That is very, uh, I love that song, first of all. It is a traditional Christmas uh, song, but I think I mentioned on last week that that particular song, Joy to the World, was written in the, s the late 1700s by the musician of the composer, Handel. Um, the song was not originally written as a Christmas song. It was a compo composition that he wrote uh, exhorting the world to be joyful that the newborn king was born, joy to the world that the Savior is born. And that's something that we as believers, whether it's Christmas or whether it's June, we should always have that joy in our heart that Jesus is alive and well and that he's in control of everything that we do. Amen. We want to get ready to go before the Lord in prayer for in just a moment, and I'll be offering prayer uh, as we come together this this morning. I want to remind us of a number of uh, of our members who are on our prayer list. Uh, if you have other prayer requests, please, I'll, I'll give you just a moment. Are there any special needs that we can speak of in the house right now? Any special moments? Any special needs that we can take before the Lord in person? My brother Stanley Black, he's been suffering from a kidney transplant. Mm -hmm. Stanley Black? I believe the transplant has already occurred, am I right? Yes. Okay. All right, we want to keep Stanley in prayer for his kidney transplant. Uh, sister Stacy, I know that uh, you mentioned this morning in our Sunday school that your sister, your sister is in the hospital. Uh, we need to keep her in prayer. May, I believe is her name, right? Also, we want to keep her in prayer, as well as our own sister, Anna Peterson. Uh, she is in New York. We want to be sure to keep her in prayer. There are a number of others that, and I'll just mention while you're thinking, Sister Laney Jordan uh, is, in, uh, is in Georgia right now. We want to certainly keep her in prayer. She has suffered the effects of a stroke uh, and uh, has uh, she's trying to recover, but she still has some difficulty to go. Sister Lois Tolbert, right here in our own city, please keep her in prayer. She is uh, recovering from uh, uh, from illness, and she is at home now, to the best of my knowledge. Am I right, Dr. Jackson? I don't think she is. I'm not sure. I don't want to say okay. I'm, I'm not sure, but I do know that she needs prayer. Uh, we want to keep Sister Lois Tarbert in prayer. Also, there are others who are members of our church. Sister uh, Betty Thomas, of course, she's in the nursing home. And there are, there may be others whose names that I'm, that I'm uh, forgetting and not mentioning, but we certainly want to keep each and every one of them in prayer, those who are elderly as well as those who are going through whatever type of situation they're going through. Are there any others, very briefly? Well, it goes without saying that all of us as believers need prayer. These are just those that we've asked in special attention to. Let's, let's pause. Let's settle our minds. Let's focus for just a moment as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Lord. Thy kingdom come. Father, we pray today that your will will be done on earth as we know that it is always done in heaven. Lord, we come together this day, the final Sunday of this month, asking of, of this year, asking that you would give us this day, Lord, our our daily bread, our daily needs. Father, we come humbly asking you that you would lead us not into temptation, but rather that you would deliver us from evil. We come acknowledging, Lord, that yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, yours is the glory, and that is forever and ever and always. Father, thank you for bringing us to this final Sunday of 2021. You've been mighty good to us, Lord. You've been so good to us, Father, and, and sometimes I'm, I marvel at the fact that you're not good to us because we are good. We thank you for your grace because, Father, along the way we have we've made many missteps, we've made mistakes, we have, we've sinned, Lord. But God, even under those conditions, you've still been good to us. And for that we say thank you. Thank you for your grace, Lord, that you shouted over us throughout the spring and the summer and the fall of this year. Thank you for your mercy, Lord God, that you have uh, just shouted over us as we 
and going up and down the dangerous highways as we travel from one place to another. God, you covered us. You covered us with your grace, with your mercy, with your, with your protection. For those things, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the material things, and we thank you for the things that we don't even know about, God. Because, our, Lord, I believe as little children, you are a wonderful parent, and you guide us around things that we never even see the danger of. You guide us, Lord, in directions away from the trouble, and we never even see it. So, God, thank you for the things that we know you've done, and I thank you for the things that we don't even know about, Lord, because you've been good to us, Father. Lord, we come this morning praying for certain members of our church. We pray for Mount Moriah as a whole, Lord, Mount Moriah Church family. But there are those, Lord God, who we especially want to lift up to you. We lift up uh, Sister Laura Stalker to you, Lord. We pray for her. She's had an extended illness, and God, you know all about it. Lord, we just come down as, as her brothers and sisters, Lord, lifting her up to you. We know that you are the eternal God. You are a healing God, you're an able God. So, Father, it's not whether you are able to, to cover and to heal her, but we just ask that you will. We lift her up to you wherever she is now, oh God, and we pray not only for her, but we pray for the family, because Lord, we know that during times of illness, there are those who love us and are close to us that are also suffering. We pray, God, for Sister Annie Ruth Peterson right now. We lift her up to you. We know that her husband has passed this this year, Lord God, and she is uh, getting used to a new life after these years of marriage. We pray for her, Lord. We lift her up to you physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, all of those things, Lord God, that make up our being. We lift her up to you. I pray, God, for Sister uh, for Sister Nay, uh, for Stacy's sister, Lord. I lift her up to you. Nay, I pray for her, Lord God. We know that she has had some serious issues, some serious medical issues. For that, God, we're not afraid, but we're concerned. We're not worried, but we are concerned. So, God, because of our concern, we pray for her, for her deliverance. We pray for her healing. We pray, God, that the procedures that the doctors are planning with will all work well. God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. We thank you, oh God, for all those who are sick and shedding, especially those members of Mount Moriah, Lord, we thank you. We praise you, we honor you, oh God. Father, as we look forward to New Year, right around the corner, we, we don't even know that we'll make it to that time, Lord. We can't see that in the future whatsoever, but if we do not make it, I want to thank you for what you've already done. Lord, we praise you now. We worship you, we honor you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. 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 We're going to have the choir come back in just a moment. Bless us again with another, another song. Before we do, I want to pause for just a moment. And I want to have a moment of silence for uh, those super seniors who have passed this year of 2021. Uh, a year ago, at this time, we were celebrating, celebrating them as we celebrate those that are with us now. But I want to take just a moment, and you can play, play softly, uh, Latoya. I'm going to call the names of each one of them that have passed this year. I pray that I've gotten all of them, and if I've missed one, forgive me. But according to my remembrance, there are seven of our super seniors that have passed in the year 2021. Seven. For a church the size of Mount Moriah, that's a, that's a large number. That's a great percentage. During this year, Sister Bertha Stinson has gone to be with the Lord. We pray for her family and that God will continue to bless them. During this year, Sister Mary Three has gone to be with the Lord. We pray for that family. We pray that God would strengthen them. During this year, Sister Catherine Three has gone to be with the Lord. We pray for her family and those.
those that love her, those that know her. During this year, Sister Maddie Tolbert has gone to be with the Lord. We pray for her family, those that are a part of her life. We pray that God will continue to strengthen them. During this year, Brother Arthur Mooney Berry has gone to be with the Lord. He was one of our senior seniors that always stood in the usher's position and he performed his duty well. Matter of fact, he's our most recent that has passed. During this year, Sister Sally Thomas has passed. She was in her 90s. At the time, I believe she was our oldest member. I believe she was 99 at the time that she passed. We pray for her family and her loved ones. And then finally, during this year of 2021, Brother William G. Smith has passed away. We pray for him. We pray for his family, and those that need him and those that love him. Those are seven names. To the best of my recollection, forgive me if I've missed one and please inform me, but those are seven names of members of Mount Moriah who have gone to be with the Lord during this year, 2021. We mourn their loss. We mourn their loss. But at the same time, we thank God that we still have a number of super seniors in a month. Amen. And ask me to polish your spirit for just a moment. And for about 30 to 45 seconds, let's just have a quiet moment in remembrance of these things.
After that, we will share uh, the word that God has laid on our heart today. Well, in my last statement, I was remembering those uh, those super seniors who have passed on. Well, I also, now I want to celebrate those super seniors who are still uh, with us in body and still with us, not only in, in spirit, but also in body too. And again, I will recite those names. And again, if I've missed one, y'all please inform me. But we want to celebrate the, 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 those who God has put in our midst and allowed us to just be able to be with them and during this uh, Christmas season and, and just another year where we're celebrating our super seniors. I'll call out the names of our super seniors who are part of our church. And please, ma'am, please, sir, if I neglect one, please inform me it was not done uh, uh, on any other way other than just my memory or others' memories who weren't, uh, weren't that great. Uh, uh, Brother Willie Butler is one of our, you can play something kind of upbeat. Because we have this is celebrating. We're celebrating. Yeah. Willie Butler is one of our super seniors for this year. This is Clara Cooper, who's now in California. She's one of our super seniors. This is Jeremy Miles.
on this final Sunday, or uh, of the final Sunday of 2022. We pray that God will enable each and one of us. Amen? Amen. 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 Okay. Did I miss anybody? I don't think I did. Okay. Well, praise God. And I do want to tell you that now, as our gift, as our tradition is, we have a, a little gift, a little, little something, something for you before you before you leave today, too. So y'all, y'all, y'all can uh, record somebody can handle that. Uh, uh, somebody can handle that. But we just we love y'all and we want to think want you to know that we do. Let me make a couple of quick announcements. Our time is far spent. I want to make a couple of quick announcements. But I, I didn't I didn't want to gloss over this super senior idea because it's very, very important. To me it's been very important. Uh, if you do know, I'll just say this, if you do know or if you or someone you know is moving into that 80 plus category during this year, please let the church know so that uh, we can include you uh, on that super senior list. Amen. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, just a couple of uh, a very, very brief announcements, and uh, we will be going home with the, the our, our choir will come back, and then we'll bring the work to you. We will. I want to. Uh, here we are at the end of the year, and uh, I've had some of our members ask me, and I want to make the announcement right now. Uh, it's been our, it's our tradition that we do have a watch night service on the 31st, on, on, on New Year's Eve. We bring in the new year. Well, we will not be having a midnight watch night service this year. Uh, first of all, I checked the weather report. There's about a 70% chance of rain uh, on Friday and going into uh, Saturday. So I don't want our members to be uh, out uh, in the rain at night. Uh, if very possible. It's not going to be cold, but it still might be. So rather than us having a watch night service this year, we will have a watch noon service. Amen. At, at 12 o'clock noon on Friday, and we will be, I will be here at the church. And if it's only me and my wife, I will be here at the church, and we'll be bringing a word of prayer. We'll be bringing a word from the Lord. You're welcome to be here with us. And uh, on the 12 noon, as we bring in the new year, during the day on Friday, Friday at 12 noon. Please join us here, or we will also have the service on our Facebook uh, Facebook page. You may join us there. If you're watching us on Facebook right now, we'll be putting the announcement out. We're going to have a watch noon service, <laughs> and just like we do, just like we do during our watch night service, we'll open the floor up for testimony, for prayer. Uh, and if there's no testimony, no prayer, we'll bring a word from the Lord. And if we're here 30 minutes or if we're here one hour, we will be here to bring in, to pray in, to sing in the new year at noon on Friday. So there will not be a watch night service. There will be a watch noon service. Amen. 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 You feel free to join us if you care to at noon on Friday as we bring in the new year. And then you can go ahead and go to bed early on. <laughs> <It's all right. laughs> Amen. 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 We're going to bring our choir back uh, for our final song, and we will come back and speak with you what God has read on our heart after that. You can? Oh. Okay. Come on. Choir.
Uh, I'm just want to thank you for my grandmother. She is uh, for my mother-in-law rather. She is 84 years old, so she is certainly uh, Sister Care Bradley. She is certainly one of our super seniors, also. Amen. 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 Let's uh, get ready. Pray with me, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for this opportunity to stand with your people to share your word, Lord God. Father, I pray now that you would allow your Holy Spirit to fill in the blanks that I leave out, Lord, to Holy Spirit, I, I ask you that you would just kind of, however you choose to do it, just take my words and use them in a way that will glorify God. I, I feel unworthy, Lord, but I know that you call me to do this work. Father, I pray now that you would allow the hearts, the minds, especially the spirits, to be receptive, and that you would allow your word to fall on good ground, that it might bring forth much fruit as you see fit. It's in the name of our Christ, the ones whose birth we celebrate during this season. It's in the name of our Christ we pray. Amen. Bibles with me to the Gospel according to St. Luke. When you found that Gospel, I want you to turn to the second chapter. I'll be brief today and really a little bit in the vein of teaching rather than uh, any other style, I guess. Luke chapter 2. And uh, I want to begin reading, at, uh, although we'll reference other verses, we'll actually read verses 36 uh, through 38. And uh, this word was inspired to me, I think, by the Lord, because one reason, we're in the Christmas season, and it deals uh, with uh, events in shortly after the birth of Christ, but also because we're celebrating our super seniors today. And the passage of scripture does deal uh, with a, a senior saint. I'm reading from the New King James Version, uh, beginning at verse 36, these words are here written. Now there was one, Anna, a, prophet, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. And this woman was a widow of about 84 years, who did not depart from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayers night and day. And coming in that instance, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him to all those who looked for redemption in Jerusalem. I want to talk to you from this thought, looking beyond Christmas. The lights are still up around town. But the presents, I believe, have been opened. Uh, the thank yous have been extended. The glad tidings of good cheer have been given. Christmas Day has passed. But what happens now beyond Christmas? I want to look beyond Christmas. I want to look beyond, for just a few moments, beyond the actual birth of our Savior, beyond the birth of our Christ child. And let's look at an incident that we can learn from that happened after the birth of Jesus. In this scripture today, to get a full context, we really need to back up to verse 26. But I'll give you a short synopsis so that you'll have a good understanding. In this passage of scripture, Jesus is 40 years or 40 days old. Uh, the Levitical law stated that the mother that delivered a child was unclean for 40 days. It was 40 days after the deliverance of a child that a woman was allowed to go into the temple because of her uncleanness. And nothing unclean was allowed to be in the temple. So Joseph and Mary are now in the temple with their child, the child Jesus. 
Now, while they were there, the Holy Spirit uh, made sure that they crossed paths with another super senior. I did not read about him, but his name is Simeon. Uh, verses 26 through 32 tell us that it had been revealed by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. That's Simeon in the prior verses. So Simeon, he came to by the Spirit into the temple on that particular day. And when the parents, Mary and Joseph, when they brought in the, the Christ child Jesus to dedicate him, to do for him according to the custom of the law, Simeon reached for the child. And the word tells us in verses 26 through 32 that he took him up in his arms and he blessed God. He, he thanked God because God had told him that he would not see death until he saw the Lord's Christ. Simeon said to God, Lord, now you're letting your servant depart. I can depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people, to bring a light to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Those verses immediately precede the verse that I read today. So with that background in mind, let's go back and attend to the verses that I read, verses 36 through, <coughs> through 38. The word says that Simeon, being a super senior, the word does not give us his age, but it says that he was an elderly man. He said, but there was one Anna. There was a woman there. There was a woman named Anna. She was in the temple that day. But let's look at Anna's situation. Let's look at Anna's surroundings. And let's see what we can get from this issue, from this occasion, rather. What can we get from this occasion to apply to our own lives after the Christ child birth, after the purification period of 40 days? Well, first of all, as we look beyond, uh, beyond Christmas, I think that the first thing we can say is that we learn how important it is to stay close to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Look at what the text says. The text says that there was a woman named Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, and she had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. Look at this, this situation with this woman. This woman was quite elderly. She was quite old. And the word tells us that her husband at some point had passed after a seven year period of time. She would have been married as a very young, young girl, as a very young woman. That was the tradition in, the, in Jerusalem and in Israel at the time. Most women were married during their teenage years. So assuming that she was married after the custom of the Jews, she would have been married at the age of uh, in her teens, and she would have been married for seven years, and for whatever reason, the scriptures don't tell us why, her husband had passed. Because it says that she had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. She was a virgin when she got married, and she lived with her husband for seven years, and something happened, and he passed away. Imagine, imagine her anger. In this day and time, women had no identity of their own. A woman's identity at this period was in her husband or in her son. Amen. A woman that had lost her husband, a woman that had lost her husband and had no children, had almost no identity whatsoever. But look at Anna. Because of her grief, because of her sad situation, she could have easily faded away from the temple, mm. faded away from the church, faded away from society, stayed away from everything that was going on. But look at her. Even in her grief, she chose to stay close to the Lord. Amen. What do we learn from that? What we learn, my brothers and sisters, is that during this year of 2021, many of us have faced grief. Many of us have had losses in our lives. It may not have been a loss of a loved one. It may not have been the loss of a child or a spouse or a parent. But somewhere along this line, during this year, 2021, there have been times of grief. But like Anna, I'm suggesting that you still stay close to the Lord. Some people use the fact that they've gone through troubles actually to stay away from the church. But Anna, 
after losing a husband, I, I don't know if he was, if he had some great disease. I don't know if he was uh, maybe killed by uh, the Roman army or Roman soldiers. I have no idea what happened. The scriptures don't tell us. But the one thing that we do find out is that she, even in her grief, and even in her time of mourning, and even in her troubles, the scriptures tell us that she stayed with the church. Look at, this, look at the text. This woman was a widow of about 84 years who did not depart from the temple. She kept on praising God. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we can get in our troubles so, and we can fall uh, into a steep, deep state of depression. We can even fall into a state of self-pity sometimes because of the difficulties that we're going through, because of the troubles that we're experiencing. But Anna gives us an example that even in your struggles, even in your losses, even in your trying times that you're going through or you will go through, stay close to the Lord. Mm. Stay close to the church. Stay close to the fellowship of the church. Stay close to the family, the church family. Stay close. Don't separate yourself out of anguish, out of grief, out of anger, or whatever it might be. Anna stayed in the temple, even though there was trouble in her life. I don't know how exactly how old she was, because by reading a different text, some text when you read, it tells us that she was uh, 84 years old, but others tend to give us the, uh, an idea that it was 84 years since her husband passed. Mm. That would have put her over 100. She was a super senior that had seen trouble in her life. She was a super senior that had gone through the highs of, of life and the lows of life, but she still chose to stay close to the church. Close to the church. Close to the church family. That's what the text says. She did not depart from the temple. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So my, my urge to you today, stay close to the Lord in every situation. Even in times of stress and sorrow, and Anna knew about those times, even in times of trouble, even in times of illness, even in times of struggle, stay close to the Lord. We're living in a day and age where uh, being a part of the church, being a member of a church, being a part of a church family, is not quite as popular as it used to be. People nowadays, for many reasons, don't seem to understand or don't seem to adhere to the, uh, to the idea of being a part of a church family. But I want you to know something, my brothers and sisters. It is important to be a part of people, a group of people that know the Lord, that love the Lord, and that can love you. Now, everybody in the church may not be perfect. None of us are. Everyone in the church may not even have that, that same agenda. But God is in the church. God is a part of his people. In times of struggle, stay close to the Lord in every situation. And we know this, that when we try to stay close to God, He will stay close to us. Well, there's one other point that I want to make, and then I'll almost be done. Anna stayed close to the Lord, even in her struggles. But she continued not only to stay close to the church, not only to be in the church, but she also continued to serve. That's what the text tells me, reading from the New King James Version. It says, who did not depart from the temple, but served God. She wasn't just someone that showed up. She actually served in the church at 80 plus years old. I don't know how old she was, but she was quite elderly. She was still serving in the church. So my word to all you super seniors out there, the ones that are here, and the ones that may be watching me or will hear me later, there's still work to be done in the church. Amen. There's still things that God has for you to be done, in the, that you can do in the church, that you can be a part of in the church. She was still serving even at that great age. Amen. That's something we can take and apply to ourselves. Not only did she stay close to the temple, not only did she continue to go to church, to fellowship with those in the church, but she continued to to serve in the church. The word says she served with fasting and prayer. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Well, what she, I believe that what she was doing was something we need more elderly in the church doing. And also, we need more young people participating. I think that we are missing a great opportunity to just sit down and talk with some of these elderly uh, super seniors sometimes. Just to sit and talk with them. My, my friend, there is so much we can learn 
There's so much we can gather. There's so much wisdom sitting right here in Mount Moriah Baptist Church. There's wisdom sitting right on pew number three, right there. That's Amen. two not super seniors. There's another one over here. There's so much wisdom in the minds of these people. And I would have suggested that if you're one of those young people, even, even young as myself, I'm not young, but even myself, there's so much we can learn. And I believe that Anna was in that temple talking to younger people, praying with them, sharing with them. And that's something we need to take advantage of as the church, as believers. Let's take advantage of this resource of knowledge. 89 years old, am I right, uh, Brother Eccles? 89 years old. There's a wealth of knowledge in this man's mind. Right Amen. Here. It, it may not be a Ph.D. degree from Auburn University, but there's a wealth of wisdom there that we can all take advantage of. We never, ever should take for granted of the elderly that is among us. So I believe that's what Anna was doing. I believe that Anna was daily in the temple, willing to reach out to anybody that needed a word of prayer willing to reach out to anybody that just needed a shake, uh, needed a hug or maybe a handshake one day. Willing to reach out to anybody who had a need in the Lord. Well, the first thing we learned is that Anna stayed close to the temple. Mm -hmm. She stayed close to the church. The second thing we learned from Anna is that she was serving. She was still serving at over 80 years old and maybe almost 100 years old. I want to remind you, my friends, that life is short. Time is short. We, as we go through this world, we see uh, that uh, it seems like it's getting shorter and shorter. How many of us, as, as old folks, remember that when you were young and you were children, Christmas seemed like it never would get here? Mm -hmm. I mean, you wait all year long for Christmas, and when is Christmas going to get here? And now, at our age, right at my age, right now, it seemed like it was just a month or two ago, and Christmas is here again. Mm -hmm. Time is living short, y'all. We, we don't have enough time. We don't have enough time to do all that God wants us to do. It's important that as believers, it's important that as Christians, as members of Mount Moriah Baptist Church right here, it's important that we take advantage of the seniors, the super seniors that are around us, and you super seniors need to be willing to continue to serve. Amen. And finally, and I'll be done, Look at what the text says. The text tells us that this woman was a widow of about 84 years. She did not depart from the temple, point number one. She continued to serve, point number two. And because of this, she was rewarded by God. There's a reward waiting for you. Look at what the text says. She did not depart from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayer. And coming in that instance, she gave thanks to the Lord. She realized in that instance that she was looking at the Christ child. God rewarded her with the ability to see and to hold and to speak about the Christ child. That's a reward because all of us, all of us could have been gone yesterday. All of us could have been gone the day before or the year before, but we're still here. God has rewarded us with the ability to worship him Amen. and to lift up the Christ child. Well, the young Christmas, I want to urge each and every one of you, stay close to the Lord. Stay close to the church. Stay close to the family, the fellowship of the church. Secondly, I want to let you know that it's important that you continue to serve as Anna did. And then I want to promise you that God has a reward for you. Anna, the Bible says that Anna, she gave thanks to the Lord. And she became one of the first evangelists for the Lord because she began to speak of him as for everyone who was in Jerusalem during that time. Now, this elderly lady left that temple that day. She left the temple after she'd seen the Christ child. And she went about telling other people about Israel's deliverance, about Israel's Savior. She went about telling people. And that's one lesson that we can all learn, no matter how old we are or how young we are, that we can leave here today telling somebody else about Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. If you meet somebody that doesn't know Jesus, if you meet someone that is looking for help in this world, you can always tell them that there's help in Jesus. Amen. I don't care what, what name you call him, but he's a way maker. He, he's a bread and a starving land. He's water when you're thirsty. Whatever you want to tell them, let them know that Jesus is the only way. We're living in a society that has minimized 
the need for being a Christian. We're living in a society that has minimized the church. We're living in a society that has minimized worshiping God. That's the society we live in today. But my brothers and sisters, don't be carried away by that, that, societal, uh, that, that societal norm. Don't ever give up on God. Mm. Yes, we'll have our struggles. Yes, we'll have our problems. Yes, we have our things that we need to deal with. But God is still in control. Amen. God is still on the throne. He is still in control. Well, I just wanted to share with you this after Christmas message. Before I sit down, I want to remind you of just one thing. Every year for the past 12 years that I've been here, at Christmas, I always say one thing to you. I tell you about how I love to see the nativity scene. I love to see the scene where wise men come and surround the baby. I, I love to see scenes where there are animals in the stable. I, I love to see uh, pictures of Mary and Joseph holding the Christ child. I, I love the nativity scenes. They're, they're beautiful. But my message to you for the last 12 years is stay not too long at the cradle. Stay not too long at the cradle, my brothers and sisters. Because it was not a baby that redeemed our souls. It was not a baby that hung on a cross on a hill called Calvary. Redemption is a man-sized job. Jesus had to grow up and after 33 years, a grown man, a strong man, in order to go through what he went through. He had to be an awesome man. I love the Christmas time. I love the nativity scene. But stay not too long at that cradle. We should be bowing at the cross and not the cradle. Amen. We should be bowing at the empty tomb and not the cradle. We should be bowing as Jesus was taken up into heaven some 40 days after his resurrection and not at the cradle. Stay not too long at the cradle. Redemption was a man's first job. He's alive today. No matter what society tells you, no matter how much they try to minimize Christianity, no matter how much they say it's not important to go to church, don't be carried away by the norms of society. Stay with Jesus. Stay in the Word of God. And as Anna did, stay. Stay in the church. Serve in the church. And God has a reward for you. Amen. Amen. Pray with me, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of our Christ, Lord, I lift up. This final Sunday, this word, this final Sunday to you, Lord. As we have all celebrated Christmas, the day has actually passed. The day that we celebrate. But Lord, I want you, I want you, Lord, to please remind us that after Christmas, we've still got work to do. Father, if there's someone who does not know you as Lord and Savior, truly know you as Lord and Savior, I pray that you would draw them to you, Father. If there's someone who has fallen away from you, I pray that you draw them to you. If there's someone who has been negligent, of their worship, of their prayer life, of their study of the word. If there's someone, I pray, God, that you would reignite the fire that was there at one time. Reignite the passion. Father, continue to remind us that there's no other way, no other way, I don't care what Google said. There is no other way Amen. to God in heaven Amen. except through Jesus Christ. Amen. There is no other way. So we honor him now. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 And amen.
glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. I just wanted to look at Anna's life and look at what happened to her. Congratulations again to our, our super seniors. God bless you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 